Oh, hello, my loves. Okay, so look at him. Welcome to Ascending with Tiff Talks 22. Today, guys, this topic, okay, it got a little spicy while I was writing it. It's like, ooh, who knows, because I be ad-libbing, you know, when I start talking. So hopefully I don't say too much and uh, my higher self will stay kicked in <laughs> um, so that, you know, I can stay on task and on point and on focus of my goal with this particular um, episode. So my goal, one, is to just empower you guys and to enlighten you guys, to give you a better understanding, right? Um, but... We are, at the end of the day, talking about sex, talking about sexual energy, talking about sacral chakra energy. And so, yeah, yeah, well, let's just say I was like, I cannot read this. I wrote a lot, too. I cannot read this in my mama's house. (laughs) Like, for real. But the sacral chakra is not all sex. But because... um, my comment that prompted a lot of response was about sexual energy and exchange of it. I'm trying to focus on just that because that's what I received a lot of questions about, okay? So, I um, am outside under a pavilion at the park out here. And so, you may hear a horn passing by or a car passing by or a bird tweeting on a sp- at a specific point in time. If that's you and that noise distracts or triggers you, it's probably something you need to pay close attention to at that particular point because I'm outside. So, you know, I cannot control the sounds of nature as far as the birds and the cicadas and whatnot. So if at a certain point you seem to notice their voices intensely at that particular time, I invite you to rewind so you can really pay attention to what's going on, okay? I did not even test this. So what would be tragic is if I'm doing all this recording and it doesn't record. We're just going to expect the best, right? So anyway, let's get started. Now, bear with me, guys, because it took some time for me to get to the sex part, okay? (laughs) Because I really want to give you a full and complete background and understanding. So as I was preparing for this podcast today, I found myself in information overload. I had to really, you know, focus to pick my angle. So we're going to see if I can stay in my lane, in a lane, actually. (laughs) But I'm positive um, we're going to get more into the blockages and healing of these in a future episode. So let's talk sexual energy. Sexual healing. Hey. But like I said about the comment on social media prompted the feedback. So, um, I wanted to be speak specifically about the exchange and what comes with that. But first, let me start by telling you about this sexual chakra. It's actually the sacral chakra, okay? It's the second chakra of our major seven chakras. And what chakras are are just energy centers um, that are our body is divided into these seven major chakras. There are plenty more to my understanding. But the majors are seven. The bottom one being the root. The second one being the sacral chakra. And so I, especially during my awakening, as I continue to learn more, I'm a huge believer that our physical body and our psychological experiences are absolutely and positively connected or intertwined, right? So truly that mind, body, and soul are one. Okay, it is not just a cliche thing to say. It is absolute truth. But first, uh, let's talk location about this chakra. The sacral chakra is located just above the pubic bone, your pelvic region. So it's pretty much that entire pelvic region and that area just below the navel. And this area is responsible for what in you? It's responsible for your passion, the things that make you happy, Um, your ability to experience joy. It's directly related to your sexuality. Directly, of course. It's like 
your genitalia is included there. Your reproductive organs is included there. So that's going to affect fertility. Men, for you guys, uh, it's going to affect sexual function. So yeah, your penis, all of those things, that's all sacral. Um, this section, also this area section, I, I can't say section without thinking sex now because that's what we're talking about. I'm going to try not to use that word. <laughs> anyway, uh, this area governs your intimacy. It governs the way you make money or your income. It governs your creativity. It governs your joy in life, your happiness, okay? So it's pretty much your pleasure, pleasure center, okay? So a balanced sacral chakra is going to allow us to improve our relationships with ourselves. Remember that I said this little part because, yeah, that's going to be important later. It allows you to improve your relationship with yourself and with other people, how you interact throughout your day-to-day -day life. But guess what? When we experience trauma throughout our lives, our bodies store that trauma in this same region. Let that sink in for a minute, okay? So first off, when I learned that little tidbit of information, talk about a clear understanding it was just like, aha. <laughs> it was like super explanatory for me. Um, but as I began to work to heal all of my chakra blockages, including the sacral, sacral which I'm still doing, um, my understanding of physical and psychological connection grew from what I was experiencing. Okay. So let me just throw this in here real quick. Ladies, that FUPA, um, for, you, for those of you who don't know, and I hate to use the P word, but it's, it stands for the fat upper P area, <laughs> okay? So yeah, I don't wanna get too graphic, even though I did say penis, didn't I? Well, penis ain't graphic, we just made it fat. Anyway, it's definitely indicative. This FUPA, I feel like, and I am no doctor, I should have started and led with that. It's definitely indicative of stored trauma and sacral imbalance, okay? I concluded this and you know, with me just being me, be, me being Tiffany, I'm only gonna share with you or try to share with you the things that I learned through studying or what I experienced, you know, myself and feel. And so, I, like I said, no, by no means am a doctor, so you can take my conclusions for what they are, you know, my conclusions. <laughs> but as I began to deeply heal my traumas, y'all, ladies, that fupa is shrinking, okay? I'm just saying. So that's motivation in itself for you to explore your blockages and work to heal them. But um, also in my observations, I have seen a difference or I noticed a difference in the effects on the body in different ethnicities. So with this chakra being quote unquote programmed from early infancy to childhood, uh, as black women, our earthly experiences tend to be so different from other races. So I feel like it is directly connected to the way that you see a lot of other ethnicities with completely flat stomachs versus a lot of our uh, African-American females who have the little pooch down there and they have a hard time getting rid of it. It's usually because on top of exercising and the types of foods we consume, there is some trauma stored that needs to be released. That's what I'm concluding. That's what I've concluded. That's definitely part of what's working for me. Um, but I feel like this is apparent in this area for so many of us. So just be observant too. But uh, that's going to be another episode. So let me get back on track. See what I'm saying? It's so much, y'all. So trauma and the things that you experience in life can shut down this second chakra. There are so many things that can create an imbalance in this particular area. And some of those, those things uh, include, but are not limited to, to sexual abuse, body shaming, um, super strict childhoods or parents in your childhood, uh, religious indoctrination, because you know, most religions teach, you know, sex is so taboo. It's even married couples made to feel guilty for goosing. Yeah, that's my, my lower self word. But, like, it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, also critical forms of social conditioning where we 
make women, even men, you know, feel like objects or objectify them or discriminate against them or make them feel bad for body types and shapes and whatnot. All of those traumas. But guess what else? Toxic relationships, of course, are even traumatic to your body. And the hurt and pain from that and unhealing or not healing is going to be stored in your sacral chakra. So if you've experienced any or several of these, you're probably slightly or completely blocked, okay? But um, I know y'all like, let's get to the sex, Tiffany. We will. But, you know, you got to have all the background, okay? So if I didn't say this before, the root chakra, uh, which is located just below the second chakra, and is first in not only position but development um, and programming, uh, it governs our safety and security with other people, with ourselves, and in life in general. But it very deeply affects the balance of our sacral chakra. Okay? And also, the sacral chakra kind of bleeds into the solar plexus chakra, which is in our abdomen. Usually, I want to, not usually, like from the navel on up. So it's kind of like a fine line there from, from, the sacral chakra into the solar plexus and below from the root chakra into the pelvic region, the sacral chakra area, okay? So I'm just saying that because I want to make clear that all three of these lower chakras are definitely connected and affect one another, okay? I had to come back to my car, change of plans because, you know, they love this girl sweet me. I stay getting bit up. Anyway, so I think we have right now a clear understanding of the location and the trauma types and the function of this chakra. Now, let's talk about how it affects your daily life and how you can identify blockages. So, I promise we're going to get to the sex, y'all. Jeez, hold up. <laughs> it's all connected, okay? So, you definitely need this info, too. Um, but I told you it governs your sexuality, your creativity, intimacy your emotional well-being, and by emotional well-being, I mean how you communicate with the world. If you are extra angry, if you are extra passive, if you have a problem with self-expression, if you just let people get away with stuff, like lack of expressing your boundaries, those things. So how do you know if it's blocked? <laughs> Simple, really. You pay attention to yourself, okay? Let me tell you, um... Addictions, if you have addictions of any kind, this was an aha moment for me because y'all know I'm having trouble releasing the cigarette addiction, right? There is definitely, or there definitely was, now that I know, I think I'm going to work harder to heal it, but it can be kind of scary to heal it, but that's going to be a whole nother thing. We'll get into it. <laughs> But addictions, period, all addictions. It could be overspending. It could be overeating. It could be, um, what else do I want to say? Drugs, of course. Drugs, alcohol, the basics. But anything that you do in excess, sexual addictions, all of those things. Um, if you are emotionless, you're kind of numb to expressing your emotions. You're kind of cold. Um... It's hard for you to feel or express feeling. If someone's pouring their heart out to you and you're looking at them like, okay, bitch, whatever. Like, like what else you got? Or you change the subject because it makes you so uncomfortable. Definitely sacral chakra imbalance. Um, if you cannot handle spontaneity or not knowing, y'all, this one hit me hard. I felt seen like a mug because I typically... And I'm getting better at it, actually, as I experience nice ones. <laughs> surprises. If you hate surprises. Um, if you can't handle not knowing. Let me tell you how what I thought about that for myself. Uh, if I'm watching a scary movie or something like that. Or just a movie that's a cliffhanger. I do this for real, y'all. My ass will Google the movie. The plot summary. And usually Wikipedia, you know, kind of tells the whole story. So I can see the ending and it's like, cool. 
because now I can watch the movie because I like, I don't like to wait. I like to know what's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? So usually if I have a better understanding, I'm more comfortable directly connected to sacral chakra imbalance, root chakra as well. Um, reproductive problems, infertility, impotence, uh, period pain, ladies, menstrual issues, um, I would even venture to say fibroids. So before you go for surgery, go for therapy. Okay. That, that's just my belief on any and everything now the, as my knowledge grows. But you said you left something out. I most definitely did. Um, sexually impulsive. If you are sexually impulsive, um, kind of like an overactive sex drive, overactive libido, and libido libido means life force, literally, the literal trans translation. So that just tells you how powerful sex is. Um, and we're going to get into that with, when we talk about the exchange of the energy. Uh, also, if you are sexually frigid, like you have a low to non-existent libido, definitely imbalanced. Because, y'all, we are sexual beings, okay? So you are not meant to be without the ability to express yourself sexually. It's just not true. Despite what we've been taught and the condition to believe, it is just not true. Um, also, some other examples. You may be tired all the time, have little to no energy, but you're not very active. It's like, why am I so tired and I don't even do nothing? Yeah, that. Been there, done that before. Uh, definitely at different points in my life. Different points of abstinence, usually. Mm, We're going to get into it. Um, like I said, if you're passive, you don't really express yourself. Uh, if you are emotionally hypersensitive or emotionally just aloof. Uh, if you have a pro if you're creatively blocked. If you feel like you want to do something new, but you just don't ever really know where to start. You can't like pin things down. Probably blocked. If you overthink everything and analyze everything probably blocked or uh, or just some form of blockage some degree of blockage okay uh lower back pain issues directly connected kidney issues and some uh gastrointestinal gi stomach issues directly connected okay if you have an overactive sacral chakra you may be prone to codependency definitely been the story of my life y'all and i know that that started in childhood how and why because I am the baby of three sisters. So I never, 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 never experienced anything without at least one of them. Usually both of them, but never without at least one. Until adulthood. And I think that's just because Monica died. My middle sister passed away. Like, no joke. Even from my sister... um. When, we, when I got to college, it went from my sister to my best friend, Courtney, at the time. Um, and all throughout, I think me and my mom have had a codependent connection <laughs> off and on. So, yeah, just look for it for that in that way. Um, emotionally explosive. Like I said, you may be angry or express your anger quickly. Fussing all the time. Single moms. Um, you so, so consumed with your day-to-day -day stresses, you taking it out on the kids, nagging the hell out your man. Um, again, also sexual addictions. These are all examples of overactive sacral chakras. And then there's the underactive sacral chakra, which is going to show up as detachment, um, being emotionally cold and being pretty much sexually frigid. Like you have pretty much completely cut off your desire for sex your attraction to what was once your sexual desire <laughs> um you com completely suppress it that is an underactive chakra so we like i said are human beings we're spiritual beings of course we are but we're human and so we are also very much sexual beings as well we are not just spirituality. There is no part of us, and I'm learning this to be so true the more that I study and awaken. There is no part of us that God gave us for no reason, okay? So, your sexuality is very important to who you are 
And it's very important to how you function in life. It's so funny. Um, I was j- not jogging. Y'all not on jog. Uh, I hate to run right now. I walk. But I was walking at the lake one day. And, and I noticed this in someone. Like the way that you stand, how tightly you grip your ass. <laughs> for lack of better words. How tightly. Like that to me is indicative of a blocked sacral chakra and I thought about this because I was walking and this man was jogging and y'all I don't know how you do it but how do you jog with your ass cheeks clenched like his pelvis was kind of like leaned in I'm like oh he's carrying some trauma honey that's just me in my observation of people anyway so if seeing two people making out disgust you or makes you so uncomfortable that you have to change the channel you probably also have an underactive sacral chakra if sexuality or all things sexual you're like oh no that's between two that should be private you see it on social media all the time sometimes i just read the comments on certain posts and i'm like oh there's the prude she's blocked she's blocked she's blocked it's just interesting to see I try not to, um, I don't judge them, but I'm definitely looking at them and kind of analyzing. So I try not to reply to those comments because, you know, everybody don't want to get rid. (laughs) But anyway, so what is a healthy and balanced sacral chakra look like? This, this looks like this. You're going to be comfortable in your own skin. That means fellas, ladies, you don't have a problem doing it with the lights on. Okay. You good with you. You're going to get this body imperfect or not perfect or imperfect. Like, Hey, I don't have a problem with you seeing me, you know, especially if it's somebody that you are choosing to, um, have this sacred physical exchange with, then surely you should be comfortable enough with them seeing you naked. Right. If not bad imbalance. Um, but also what a healthy, healthy balanced sacral chakra is going to look like. There is no sexual guilt. Okay. There is, you don't feel bad for getting turned on. You don't feel bad for being aroused. You don't feel bad for, um, feeling sexual. You don't feel bad. Um, also there is no overindulgence. Oh, look at the froggy. There's no overindulgence when it comes to uh, sexual activity, okay? You ain't just humping any and everything like a dadgum rabbit. And it ain't something you got to do eight, nine, ten times a day. You have a loving partner. You want to touch yourself. Those things, that's fine. But anything in excess is going to be addictive, right? An addiction. Um, also, something that I know definitely has occurred in the past few years, um, you begin to see how, sa- for me, you begin to see how sacred your sexuality is. So you value the exchange and you're just more discriminatory about the exchange, right? You're going to be more open to new experiences, not just sexual, but life experiences, period. Um, So my conclusion was that um, an imbalanced sacral chakra kind of keeps you stagnant. So if you feel like uh, you've been doing the same thing day in and day out for years and years, you don't really see growth in your life, but it's consistent. Yeah, there's probably a sacral chakra blockage, probably some trauma that you need to deal with, dig into and get healed behind. You know what I mean? Get it handled. Um... But yeah, not just sexual, life experiences and the things that light you up or the things that you're passionate about. Uh, You're going to be open to these things, okay? Emotionally open, you'll become more emotionally open, but able to set healthy boundaries. So you're not going to let people walk all over you. You're going to be less passive. You're going to be more comfortable expressing yourself in defense of yourself, okay? Um... Your creativity is going to be restored and spontaneity is not going to scare you, which is how, you know, I'm gauging. Okay, I'm healing because all of these things are changing for me. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, you'll be 
more. Oh, wait, did I skip some? Yeah, so those are symbols of a a about signs, indicators of a balanced uh, sacral chakra. Also, you'll be more uninhibited, um, unconstrained, alive, leisurely. No, wait, I'm reading that wrong. So after all of that, see, and I'm not going to even edit that, edit that out. Y'all just going to get that information. <laughs> Hold on. So now, what we're going to talk about is what sex is, okay? And what, yeah, what sexual energy is and what it, how it displays itself. That's what we'll say. So, sexuality, sex, sexual energy, sexual exchange, um, what makes it spiritual, it is an uninhibited, erotic, unconstrained, alive, leisurely, inventive experience. Okay. It's, I was reading the information I was reading. Um, I decided to say that it's, it's between two aligned lovers. Okay. Because... They would like you to believe that you need to be married or you have to be married um, or it's not okay if you're not. And that's not true because why? Even as a single person, you are still a sexual being. So if you are blocking or suppressing that part of yourself because you are not yet married, you're, you're disservicing yourself. Um, and I like to say two aligned lovers, but let me tell you this. Well, I'm going to get to it. Because <laughs> uh, it ain't got to be two. It can also be an auto act, okay? But it is an expression of love, and it also aids in deepening love. So this, ladies, is why it is hard to... Pretend you want to have a sexual relationship with somebody over a long period of time without catching feelings. It's virtually impossible to do. Ladies and men too, y'all can't do it. We are typically built up in the same manner from an emotional or um, psych and a psychological standpoint, guys and girls. So um, those lifelong uh, cuddy buddies y'all have, yeah, okay. When you're going to admit you, you love them? <laughs> Quit playing these games. But anyway, so there is a huge... I just listed those things and named those things to just show that there is a huge link between sex and spirituality. And it is a strong and powerful link. Like I told you earlier, libido actually translates to life force. If that don't sound major, what does? Sex is a creative dance. Okay. Also, autoeroticism. It's normal. What is autoeroticism? It's masturbation. It's being able to touch yourself. If you ain't did it, and some people are like, I'm in a relationship. I don't have to do that. Child, please. You ain't got to. <laughs> but... If you're so disgusted by it, if you're so turned off by it, you probably got a blockage going on. Some something you need to be healing there, okay? But anyway, sex is healthy. Sex is intimate. It is not simply a hunger to be satisfied, which is pretty much what we've been taught. It's pretty much the way society functions. It's pretty much how they thrust sexuality in your face. But that kind of diminishes the spirituality of the exchange. And it is such a spiritual exchange. Um, sex, sex is generosity in a healthy relationship or healthy sexual exchange. It's generosity. It's giving. It is patient. It is persistent. It is affectionate. It is empathic sensitivity. It's the kind of exchange that affects your everyday life, that affects the way you move throughout your day. 
In other words, it makes you joyful. And people can see that. And people can feel that. They can feel the shift in your energy. You just vibe in higher. Because you are connected to yourself or to someone else in this spiritually sexual way. Okay? And when I say, I want to go back to this. Empathic sensitivity. Empath. Empathy. It is being able to relate or feel or exchange emotion with someone. It's being so connected to someone that you can feel their energy and know what's going on with them. So that is a spiritual... Ooh, chai. That's hot, ain't it? That is hot. <laughs> you can feel the empathic exchange when you are kind of making love in in this type of way okay and a lot of us think that because oh this is just somebody i sleep with occasionally this somebody that i'm casually connected to we think that this empathic exchange exchange does not occur let me tell you that is wrong okay so with the spirituality of sex that i'm um, i'm telling you guys about it is not something that is safe for you to do with just anybody. Because I've already told you how um, how all these traumas are stored here. So whoever it is that you're dealing with, whoever it is that you're connected to, that exchange is going to occur. Impacts especially. Y'all used to absorbing people's energy. So when you couple that with the strength and power of sex whoa nelly okay let me tell you how i came to that conclusion so y'all i had to get in the car hold on this is hot well not get in the car because i was already in the car but i had to turn on my ac because baby it's getting hot in here uh, <laughs> but anyway where was i oh how i came to that conclusion because this, when I started to work on my vibration, right? So I'm super aware of my energy and how I'm vibing. I was dating this guy and I feel like he was kind of just prone to aloofness for sure. Um, prone to depression, even though he would never have admitted that. Um, I'm an energy reader. <laughs> even before I knew I was an energy reader. So I sensed that in him. I could tell when he was down, when something was on his mind, etc. But anyway, I'm vibing high. I'm feeling good. And then he comes over for a couple hours. And when he leaves, I my energy is just black. Like, it ain't because I'm tired. I mean, I'm snapping. I'm cranky, I'm isolating, I want to be alone. I was like, once I started to really understand and know myself, it was like, okay, nah, -uh. this is not my energy. Not my energy at all. And it's so funny because this is a person that I had broken off our relationship. Oh, y'all, they ate me up. I got at least three bites on my thighs. But anyway, um, this is a person that I had kind of broken the connection off with anyway. And so... We shouldn't have been exchanging anyhow, but purpose in everything, because that was really another aha moment where I was like, yeah, we won't do that no more. So, yeah, what I did instead was went the opposite direction and shut it down almost all together. You know what I mean? My, my libido and that backfire. We can't do that. So um, how to come out of that? I have definitely gotten back into self-pleasuring me and my homegirl in college we used to have a saying can't nobody fuck me like me uh excuse my language if that offends you i hope not but anyway because it's a thing like okay i need i don't need to have this exchange with you to enjoy myself and to make me feel good i know how to make me feel good <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i want to share that with you or with someone else or you know your partner or whatever but because uh, let me let me get back on track because spirituality is all about our true higher selves sexuality is an extremely important part of us and the two of those things 
must work or coexist, okay? Your spirituality and your sexuality. So, sexual repression, um, nor overindulgence, they don't help to aid in spiritual maturity. They don't help to aid in growing you. But it really just deepens your blockages. So if your partner has these blockages and you exchange this sacred energy with them, then guess what? They basically or essentially just transfer their shit to you and vice versa. Okay? Depending on who's the most balanced or imbalanced. You know? And is that what you want? <laughs> is that what you want? We've been conditioned to believe that that does not occur. That it can be a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And it really can't. It not, not over an extended period of time. Maybe once or twice you could do it with somebody with no feeling attached or no emotion attached to it. But I'm going to venture to say even then, that, that's because you numb. You know what I mean? That means you indeed have blockages going on. Now, let me tell you, there are definitely some ways to cure and address these blockages. Um, one is to eat foods connected to this uh, to this chakra. I say eat connected to it, like the colors, the color orange, okay? It's so funny because maybe two weeks ago, I was drawn to a mango, and so while I'm doing my research to do this podcast for y'all, I was like, no wonder I was craving this damn mango. <laughs> it's so funny how everything just comes full circle. So what I did today was just kind of discussed um, the sanctity of sexuality, the sanctity of the exchange, right? And what the blockages are. What I really want to get into is how to heal these things how to heal these blockages but we are already at 37 minutes and so um i think i'm going to save it for another podcast but ladies for you guys think yoni steam okay let me just tell you i had no idea that's a whole story first of all i ran from it after i had scheduled the service several times i ran from it so much until my friend finally asked me what are you scared of healing what are you scared of releasing baby i did not know it was so much to be released yeah so the first time that i did my yoni steam that night um i had my first psychic vision and it really was a trauma that was stored in my sacred chakra that i had no idea about because it was from conception you know it wasn't even technically my my trauma so to speak but we're gonna have to get into that on the next episode which i'm almost inclined to go ahead and record right now but i won't i'm gonna give y'all some time to process all this okay because i know this was a lot and i was trying to go a little quickly to kind of get everything in there but just remember how sacred before and when you choose your partners just remember how sacred um, sexual energy is how powerful it is and how that that exchange can affect your emotion and your psychology and how you walk in your day to day just remember those things so that you can be more selective about who you share that special intimate creative connection with okay Okay, that's all I got for you guys today. So make sure um, you guys are following me on Instagram, Facebook. There's also a group that accompanies the podcast. So we can talk about all this over there. It is called Ascending with Tip Talks 22. The link is also in my social media bio. Um, also on my Facebook page as well. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope y'all got something from this today because I definitely enjoyed doing the research. Now, I'm going to go play with myself or something. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not today, right now. All right. <laughs> Vibe high, guys. See you soon.